Then I will pop the question and you say okay. Say then we'll be married in the month of May. You know, 2008 was a pretty good year. We had some pretty good films, uh, the election. While I was working on those streets, watching those folks see their jobs shipped overseas, you were a corporate lawyer sitting on the board of Walmart. <laughs> yeah, you get the idea, it was, yeah. But it was also an incredible year for games. Classics like World at War, Mass Effect, Left 4 Dead, Far Cry 2, Spore. Yeah, it was just such a great bundle. But there were two games that blew everything away. Fallout 3 and GTA 4. Though the Fallout franchise still lacks multiplayer, it's still addictive. And for GTA, its multiplayer is not really interesting as it is today. As we all know, GTA 5 has the best multiplayer anywhere. But other than that, let's get into this. You are a resident of Vault 101, and you're watching yourself grow up and seeing how shitty your life is. But for whatever reason, your dad abandons you instead of taking you with him. So you have to find him, and eventually you find him. And hashtag spoiler alert, but he dies. I'm sorry for your loss. Having it in Washington is perfect. It's interesting seeing the Capitol and the Washington Monument just destroyed. So yeah, good setting. Lots of sightseeing to do. So Nico and his cousin Roman, that sounds weird saying it the other way because you know the joke. And I'm not gonna use the joke because it's been over. Nico! It's Roman. Let's go, boy. I just couldn't resist. But anyways, these two are trying to live the American dream, <laughs> which we know doesn't exist. So, so they see what the real American dream is, which is basically shit. And after Michelle, Karen, he meets Kate, and they go on a date. Hey, there's a spoiler. At Roman's wedding, she is shot accidentally because Nico was the target. But don't worry, everything at the end goes fine for our hero. New York is a amazing decision. It really does just fit perfectly into this theme of a game. And I would like to note out of the random that I actually found Trump Towers in GTA 4, no joke. And in GTA it's called Cleefrop's Tower. You can't enter it, you can't do anything, it's just there. And for whatever reason, trees are growing out of it, lol. When it comes to textures, Fallout 3 has some really good textures, unless it's on the face, because that's ugly. Whoa, what's going on? Is this person gonna kill me? I just saw my dad get killed, and what the fuck? <laughs> The colors and lighting are sort of okay, I sort of see a lot of greens and oranges. GTA 4 uses a pretty interesting technique that Fallout 3 sort of uses, but GTA 4 uses it more, and they like to make their lighting soft and use motion blur, and I think this is used to make the effect that the graphics look a little bit more realistic and everything feels a little bit more just smooth, and it works, and I sort of enjoy it. Of course, GTA doesn't have that, the graphics are just incredible, but when it comes to textures and detail, it doesn't seem to be that much of a big focus as it is on Fallout 3. At least people's faces don't look retarded. <laughs> To play Fallout 3 properly, you'll need 2GB of RAM or more, DirectX 9, an Intel Core processor that is 2 or higher, or 2.4GHz, you know, just for people who don't like Intel. So yeah, it's not bad. And the file size, according to the Xbox 360, is 8GB. I'm not sure if that's the same for PC or for like any other console. Unlike GTA 5, GTA 4 is a bit smaller, and because of that, it's not as laggy and it's more compatible with more computers in terms of it's not gonna crash for people or lag. So it's recommended that you also have a Intel Core 2 or 2.4 gigahertz, so it's the same. And 2 to 2.5 gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty impossible not to have. I think even the cheapest option cannot have that. The Galaxy S8, rumoredly, will have 6 gigabytes of RAM, so there's absolutely no way 
that no one can run this game. And going back to Fallout 3, this is really weird, but I'm pretty sure any Windows 10 or I think even Windows 8 users can agree that when you try and run Fallout 3 for the first time, you can't because you need Windows Live or whatever that is, which is sort of weird that the game of the year of 2008 has not been updated to run on Windows 10. But you can run the first Fallout, the second Fallout, Fallout New Vegas, so what the fuck? So unlike Fallout 4 versus GTA 5, I didn't include weapons, and that's because GTA 4 doesn't really focus on weapons that much as GTA 5 does, so, you know, it's just not fair. And there really isn't much else to talk about, it's mostly about the story, and it's basically one of those games where it's mainly focused on which story is better. Between a story about two cousins trying to find a better life in New York, and a story about a boy fighting for his father, it's pretty obvious that Follow 3 did the best. I mean, come on, it won game of the year. But Fallout is more about defense. If I want to attack, you can't really do that. But you can do that more in GTA and you could steal cars and stuff. So they both have their ups and downs. So yeah guys, this is the last game versus game for this year. I thought that would end it with two amazing games that are classics and we both love all of them. Seriously, they're both a lot of fun. They're both beautiful. I love the locations for both. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.